kind of feel like I look like some kind of uncle figure that would tell you bedtime stories and then also bring your nutcracker to life. Anyway, hello, my name is Leonie, welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be talking about all the books that I read in the past year and we are going to be ranking them from worst to best. Let's just begin with the absolute worst of the worst of the worst books that I read this year. This year, oh, it really was the year of disappointing books. Because we've got like 40 books to talk about, I'm gonna go through them super, super quickly. So if you want like actual in-depth reviews that I usually do, all of these books I talk about in other videos on my channel as well. This video is just for funsies. The one that I've decided to put all the way at the bottom because what a train wreck. And that is uh, Misfit by L. Kennedy. If the implied threesome between a student and not one, but two of his teachers are the most genuinely enjoyable part of the book, then you know something is a little bit fishy. So this high school ensemble romance drama makes you play my favorite game, and that is the game of is it a romance or is it a thriller? It gives us a hacker boy, breaks into all of her social media accounts to find out exactly what she loves and what she's into and then uses that to manipulate her into loving him. Um, ding, ding, ding. It was not a thriller. This was supposed to be romantic. We're supposed to be thinking, oh my God, a hacker boyfriend. That's so like mysterious and smart. I've always known that I've been like very much of a goody two shoes in high school. I didn't have like a big, like dramatic high school life, but this book made me realize that I should have been taken to a monastery because compared to this book, I was a nut. Then, oh God. I'm still so mad about this book. Angrily taking it out of the pile. We've got Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Marer. What is the book equivalent to a catfish? Because that is what this was. It's called Assistant to the Villain, so you might think this book is going to be about, you know, an assistant to a villain doing villain assistanty things. Nah, uh, nah. -uh. This entire book is about some random mystery that our assistant to the villain does have to solve because she's the assistant, but they barely do any like villainous things throughout this entire book. There's only like vague allusions to what our villain is doing and we just don't get to actually see it. Understandable because if you show our villain going on some kind of bloody rampage on stage, suddenly it's going to be a lot harder to actually make him redeemable of the love interest. I think, I don't know, I think like a bloody rampage would be kind of hot, but mm. this entire book honestly felt like a your name slash villain Wattpad fiction where you're just supposed to like insert yourself into this assistant main character. And then also you're supposed to just insert your favorite villain into the villain character. And the author doesn't actually create original characters for them. You just have to project all of your hopes and dreams into these characters. But my hopes and dreams is that one day, finally, someone will write an actual good villain romance. And then the biggest crime, the biggest crime that this book committed that really made the author the real villain is that it had the gall to not be a standalone. But before I move on, I have a question for you. Do you really want to get into more of your creative passions in the new year and learn new creative skills, then I wanna put you on the sponsor of today's video and that is Skillshare. You probably already know Skillshare as the largest online learning community for creative, but I wanna highlight a very wonderful feature they have that really sets you on the right creative path and that is their learning paths. I should do 
a class on puns. These are curated sequential class collections so you can learn to master a specific skill. Something that I really want to nurture in the upcoming year is using Procreate, which is the app that I use to make illustrations and the little intro cards for most of my videos. And Skillshare has a learning path on how to master Procreate with a bunch of classes on professional use of Procreate. I used a lot of the things that I learned while making the intro card for this video. And they have so many other learning paths. So you save time researching because Skillshare just curates the best classes in that specific skill and neatly organizing them so that each sequential class really builds on the previous ones. And the first 500 people that will click my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can immediately get started. So click the link in the description and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The next one of the worst books I read this year was Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. So right before I started reading this, I spilled cider on the book. So that's why the dust jacket is all frumpy. And I think this was a premonition from the universe that I just shouldn't have bothered with it. But alas, I was enticed by its premise of a story with like a death tournament, an enemies to lovers romance, a magic system that allows people to jump between bodies. And unfortunately, the common theme between all of these things is that it really felt like the author had just not put any thought into them. No, Chloe Gong, you can't just write a death tournament like the Hunger Games and then not put any like actual political thought into it. Oh no, you did it. <laughs> no, Chloe Gong, you can't just write a book about body jumping and not think for a second about the concept of bodily autonomy and consent. Oh, oh, you did it. No, Chloe Gong, you can't just write an enemies to lovers romance where the characters absolutely hate each other and then for absolutely no reason suddenly love each other at the end. Oh, you did it. I call a lot of books wasted potential, but I think this year the wasted potential prize unfortunately goes to immortal longings. Then I read The Bridge Kingdom because I was like, oh my god, everyone's so into it. It's enemies to lovers, romance -y. you know, I'm in a vibe where I just want some romance in my fantasy books. Let's give it a try. I just want to set the vibe of this story, all right? So the book starts out with our main character just brutally killing all of her sisters because they've been like she has like 10 sisters and they've been in this competition to win the approval of their father and they all want to be chosen so our main character is like you know what i'm just gonna kill all of my sisters whoa you know tone set for the rest of the book but then it turns out that it was like, oh, she didn't actually kill them, you know, she just gave them like a little poison that made it seem like they were dead, but they weren't actually dead. So this, all this cool impact was actually backpedaled a lot. And that was the actual tone set for the rest of the book. The main character is a trained assassin to kill the king and then somehow just never manages to actually kill him even though she's like trained for it her entire life. She just keeps making mistakes. The only thing she managed to kill was the vibe. And my biggest problem with this book is just a classic romanticy thing where we are given enemies to lovers. We are introduced to this dude who is a king and I guess he's tall and really, really muscled and like tortured. And that's all I could tell about him. They're all the same and I just don't care. And I'm so over these romance books that think creating chemistry is just writing two really hot characters and putting them next to each other. Girl, you failed your class in chemistry. The one time you were supposed to create an explosion and you didn't. There's just a formula that keeps being used of like hot man plus not a sexist asshole equals love of your life. No. You've also failed your math class. I'm sorry. 
go back to romance school. <laughs> yeah, not it. Okay, let's move on to other books that I was like kind of disappointed by but weren't like bad. We've got Legends and Lattes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So I think I need to preface this by saying that I don't drink coffee because my experience with caffeine is actually pretty similar to what my experience was with this book. First, I love the taste. I love the vibe of it all. Having a little cup of coffee in your hand while you're breathing out little tufts of air. Just like the beginning of this book, I was cozy-pilled to the max. But then I start to get a headache and I start to get dizzy and I start to just kind of dissociate a little bit from the world. I wish I never drank that coffee in the first place and I wish, severely wish I put less sugar in. And that's kind of how I feel about this book. At the beginning I was like, oh these orcs, they're making coffee, it's so cute. And then after a while I was like, they're still making coffee and it's still so overly, overly sweet and cute and I'm kind of done and I'm feeling like I just ate a little bit too many cinnamon rolls and I'm getting a little bit nauseous, a little bit like, ugh, I kind of want to ugh, puke at it, you know? If you are looking for a book that is just ultimate cuteness and chillness for 300 pages, you would definitely still love this book, but if you really need a little bit more depth into your plot and characters, then I wouldn't recommend it. Then I read a non-fiction book named Manipulation, Gaslighting, Invasions of Privacy, Lack of Boundaries in Families, things like that. It also goes into how you, maybe not on purpose, could be subconsciously manipulating people. So great, now I'm constantly worrying that I am accidentally manipulating everyone around me. The book is very cut and dry, straight to the point, didn't retain any information. Let's move on. Read it if you need an intercourse into manipulation. Don't read it if you're gonna use it for the wrong ways. Another unfortunate disappointment is my first book by Angela Carter that I read and that is Heroes and Villains. Angela Carter grips you by the throat with her really direct and intense writing style and after reading this book, now also having read a little bit of her other work, I'm realizing this book just wasn't her best, I think. I should have known this before I picked it up because the only reason I bought this one specifically was because it was priced off um, as opposed to the other books by her in the bookstore. I would recommend this if you are more into literary fantasy, you enjoy a lot of symbolism, Bible references, the gothic, and tales of misbehaved girls that get kidnapped and taken in by a group of savages. Don't read it if you're like me and you just don't like breakneck pace stories where there is no time to focus on the characters in our world. We've now really entered into books that were just fine, you know? They were all just fine. The first one is The Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo. I know I never thought I would call a Lee Bardugo book just fine, but I enjoyed myself, you know? I always believe that villain origin stories are a little bit more than just, oh, he had a sad past and like one thing happened and now he's suddenly super evil. And this villain origin story of the Darkling also doesn't do that. It just shows you one little step in the long walk of the Darkling becoming evil. And of course it includes mommy issues and bad luck in love. <laughs> it's a nice story, it has nice art in it. Recommend if you are a big fan of the Shadow and Bone series and the Darkling as a character, but if that doesn't say anything to you, don't read it. Then we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is a super heartwarming story of this kind of surly middle-aged man that melts his heart and finds love with another man at this orphanage full of super well-written and quirky magical children. These children are quirky in the sense that some of them have tentacles and other are the Antichrist. And then they all overcome systematic oppression by using the power of friendship. Do read this if you have a Pinterest board full of cozy little cottages by the seaside. Don't read this if you don't have a sweet tooth. Oh god, the pile is just 
collapsing. The next book is about a small folkloric village surrounded by evil forests where once in a while the evil witch comes to the village to take away one of the young people to come live with them in their tower. I know this sounds exactly like Uprooted but it is actually Bitterthorn by Ket Dunn where our main character says I volunteer as tribute and goes to live with this witch. Mm. I would do that too, honestly. This is the only LGBT romancy book that I read this year and it was markedly less annoying than the ones just between a man and a woman. <laughs> read it if you don't want any annoying gender stereotypes and macho man in your romanticies. Just a slow and sweet sapphic romance. In fact, it was so slow that I personally found it a little bit boring at times. So yeah, don't read this if you're looking for a fairy tale with lots of action. And then we've got two books that were both good and bad? I'll explain. The first one is Bella Donna by Adeline Grace. The good in question here was the romance. The bad was pretty much everything else. Read this if you like shadow daddy romance. I hate that I keep using this word for it, but you know what I mean. The love interest is some shadow wielding dude. In this case, it's literally the Grim Reaper death himself. I just love that Adeline Grace has successfully tricked us all into reading a romance with like romance scenes that include shadow tentacles. Honestly, I really applaud her for that. And definitely read this if you love the gothic, desire, the unknown. The bad is the mystery plotline that just taints this story. I really didn't want it. It was so unnecessary. The theme of death and immortality is barely touched upon in a book where the love interest is literally death himself. Every single theme that appears in this book could have been turned into a duet by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Shallow. And then I think kind of the opposite almost. We have The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. The good in question here were the themes. The bad in question was everything else. But this is I think more of a me thing. So read this book if you love sci-fi that explores ideas. In this case ideas of gender. You know what if there was a planet where people just didn't have gender. Super interesting. Some amazing quotes in this book. What is the impact on love, on sex, on language? But don't read this if you, like me, really actually need an interesting plot and characters to keep you engaged while this book is exploring its ideas. All the other books are pretty much just good, so let's keep going. The next one is Letters to a Young Poet by Raina Maria Rilke. Alternate title, Tough Love for Creative People. If you want the literary equivalent of Rilke whispering in your ear ASMR style that if you are not dying without writing, if you are not losing your soul if you don't write, then you just should just stop. And then you should read this book. There are some beautiful quotes in here, especially the ones regarding more life, general life advice that I've definitely remembered. My favorite one is I think also the most important one. And that is what matters is to live everything, live the questions for now. You know, instead of just constantly asking yourself questions about life, just live them. Very similar book to this, I listened to the audiobook for Art Matters by Neil Gaiman. This book is Neil Gaiman telling you how to reach your artistic dreams by letting you know that he lied during his first writing job interview and that's how I got the job. <laughs> Now maybe Rilke cannot actually speak into your ear, but if you listen to the audiobook for this one, it is narrated by Neil Gaiman and his voice is so beautiful. I highly recommend that. This book is specifically good if you need a reminder that, well, art matters. Which can mean anything from writing to movies to like actual museum art. So if you do something in any of those fields, I would highly recommend this book. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, which is kind of the hot girl book on TikTok, which usually just means books about insufferable female characters that are also just mentally ill. 
that's actually a pretty good description of this book. This is a very smothering story about the foggy way that a young woman with depression experiences life. How other people don't know how to deal with her depression. How this young woman doesn't know how to deal with her own depression and how other people don't know how to deal with young women. I think you will like this if either you yourself have struggled with your mental health or if you're someone who often thinks to yourself that you're a terrible person or if you actually are a terrible person or if you are young and you don't know what you're doing with your life. You probably won't enjoy this book if you are a good and kind-hearted person. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf is her book about how women could have also been great writers if only they had access to money and a room of their own. A dream that still lives on among women today who just wish that they were rich enough so they could buy a cottage in the woods. This essay collection is written in Virginia Woolf's signature stream of consciousness style. So for the first 20 to 50 pages I was just thinking why are we walking down the street? Why are we going to this dinner party? Why is there so many emphasis on the people that she's talking to? But when she actually arrives to the actual essay part of the book, her points are really good. Then we have Period Power by Macy Hill. I feel very twofold about this book. On the one hand, I was constantly on my guard for the kind of pseudo-scientific information in there. On the other hand, it low-key changed my life. This book is about the fact that we as a society do not take into account that about half of us have a monthly hormone cycle. And that doesn't just mean that you want to crawl into bed with a heating pad once a month. It also means that you have fluctuating energy levels, muscle strength, sex drive all throughout the month. And this book gives super practical tips on how to kind of plan your month around this monthly cycle, which has genuinely been so helpful in my daily life. But then throughout all of the little biological facts that she mentions that I recognize from my degree, she also sometimes mentions so many things that are kind of just pseudoscientific. Um, so if you can read through that, not really focus on the details, but just focus on the big picture, I think this book is very helpful. Ooh, I think the only like epic fantasy I read this year. We've got The Adventures of Amina Al-Sirafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Imagine like a mission heist fantasy story, except all of the characters in the crew are middle-aged. Oh wait, that's actually very normal when the main characters are all men, but this time the main character is a woman and it's actually pretty unheard of to have like a woman in her 40s, 50s be the main character and also in this case like the leader of the pirate crew. Read this if you want a fun, silly, wacky adventure quest on sea where the whole point of the story is that legends are often just nonsense, especially if they are about women. Nestle and Bone by T. Kingfisher is I think the literary equivalent of a cabinet of curiosities. You don't read it for the exciting plot, you don't read it for like a deep dive into characters, you read it for just this slow cozy quest where you meet all sorts of interesting characters and beautiful places along the way. This is cozy fantasy for people who consider goblin markets, living dead, dogs made of bones and evil witches cozy. Move over coffee shops, we're having a tea party at the local graveyard. I started off the year 2023 with finishing the Cruel Prince trilogy with the book The Queen of Nothing. I heard a lot of people say that the last book was like a huge disappointment. I really really enjoyed it. It was just a little bit less like stabby stabby scheming and a little bit more like big war army antics which I don't think is this series strength but I still had a good time. You should read this entire trilogy if you love mean fey and folklore, cruel and cunning main female characters, and grey morality. Don't read this if you're picking it up just for the enemies to lovers romance, because yes, I still think this is the enemies to lovers ship. I will never be over Jude and Carden. It is maybe 
10% of the entire series, the romance, and they spend like the first half of the trilogy brutal brutal enemies which is how i prefer my enemies to lovers but if you're really if you want the lovers part it takes a while <laughs> okay so this is kind of an unexpected one i really never expected to have an ellie hazelwood so high up on the list but here we have love theoretically by ellie hazelwood and there was just a door slam because my housemate left the house which i think was beautiful emphasis on the title this is the romance book for all the people pleasers for all the girlies that kind of change who they are and what they say based on the people that they're around and just need someone to stop their bullshit you may know the fake dating trope as like a boy and girl pretend to date but this is fake dating as in the girl is constantly fake dating people to help them out and the love interest is like the only one that sees through it and that it's fake. They're both physics researchers, so there are some academic rivals to lovers going on. Mm -hmm. Just don't read this if you are allergic to uber quirky humor and extremely like quirkified female main characters. Ellie Hazelwood has not yet stopped constantly describing our love interest as huge tall big man there is a line in this book where she describes the love interest as he was towering over me like a towering tower so at this point i feel like ellie hazelwood is just messing with us all and we're all too dumb to realize what's going on the higher that we get onto this list the more book we get with just ultimate vibes uh including this one this is a study in drowning by ava reed the vibes here are abandoned old mansions english cliff sides fairy folklore and two love interests that are constantly blushing every single page they are blushing <laughs> there's a lot of blushing in this book this is for the dark academia fans that also hated when men don't read this just for the rivals to lovers it's another one of those cases where the book gets marketed at rivals to lovers but it's more like they like vaguely dislike each other at the beginning and then they just cooperate for the rest of the book the romance is more of like the sweet and cute variety then we've got the entire all for the game series <laughs> the first book being the foxhole court this is the worst book series i've ever loved the entire thing reads like fan fiction in the best way but also in the worst way both both really and this story involves um the japanese mafia a made-up violent sport and characters edgier than the knives they secretly carry up their sleeves but you're gonna come out of reading the series caring so much about these characters you're gonna watch tiktok edits of them and cry like you're 14 years old you should read this if you enjoy the epic highs and lows of any kind of high school sports drama don't read this if you've ever looked down on fan fiction you will hate this we're getting quite high up the list already because you know that lee bardugo never misses so we got hellbent usually i just forget everything about a book the moment i read it but i still have all of her descriptions of new haven and the university and the starry nights just burned into my brain i just love it when university students start summoning demons and opening portals to hell you know, I never got around to doing that while I was in university. So I'm glad Lee Bardugo wrote a book about it. Don't read this series of hers if you like her more like second world epic fantasy. But if you've read her other work and thought to yourself, hmm, I wish this was a little bit more dark and gritty, then you should read this series. The Stolen Air by Holly Black is the other series in the Cruel Prince world. Right off the bat, don't read this if you want a second Cruel Prince. It's just not that. It is more quest adventure than it is political intrigue storyline. Also, don't read this if you're expecting another Cardin and Jude. It's just not. Like, the romance is more of the 
charming boy and weirdo girl variant. The charming boy in question here is a prince with hooves. <laughs> who also has like a secret evil side and the weirdo nerd girl is a corpse like ice fey that has grown up in the savage woods read this if you want to feel the joy of reading young adult fantasy but you've read so many of them now that you really just want to see some tropes be subverted for once we've got the secret society of irregular witches oh pardon me the very secret society of irregular witches i am already looking forward to the new book by this author that comes out in a few months so it can warm my cold cold winter heart and i think that says a lot about how this book made me feel read this if you ever feel alone or unaccepted and just want to read a book that make you feel seen in that feeling but not in a way that just like brings you down but in a way that makes you just so happy and feel good about the world and also there's witches and three little cute witch children don't read this if you are allergic to those pillows and mugs with inspirational quotes on them because the humor and the philosophies in this book are very much in the style of oh reach for the moon and you will land among the stars then the only romanticy like high romanticy that i actually enjoyed this year like really enjoyed is the serpent and the wings of night by carissa broadbent it gave me exactly what i wanted from the romanticy genre a fun action-packed fantasy world this one is vampires and vampire hunters and like a whole death tournament going on a big heap of romance it's got a vampire and vampire hunter that is full of chemistry where the characters actually flirt with each other and the exact right amount of spicy scenes where it's just like a few ones here and there but most of the story is just the tension and anticipation between it all yeah don't read this book if you actually want to read like a really good high fantasy story because it, it, I don't think it's good enough for, to be that. <laughs> but if you want a, a romance, see if you're reading it for the romance, this is perfect. Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This fits the female rage category, but it's fantasy, meaning that the rage in question will of course involve curses and demons and girls escaping from towers. The best kind of female rage, if you ask me. This is for those who want stories about mistreated girls that are slowly learning to grow into their strength and stand up for themselves. Do not read this if you don't like dark and horror elements to your stories because this is not like a cute sweet romance or a fairy tale story the way people sometimes mistake it for. Also don't read this if you can't accept a little bit of dumb dumb behavior from your young female characters okay? They're young, they do stupid things. You just gotta accept it. And we've got Cultish by Amanda Mantel. If you've ever watched a video about one of those multi-level marketing companies or heard someone talk about their like transcendent row cycle classes and you thought to yourself, huh, that kind of sounds like a cult. This book is exactly for you. This is about the language that is often used by cults and how other companies can use cult-like tactics to rein in all their customers. So if you need another excuse to not go spinning, read this book. Oh, we've only got four books left. Oh, the ranking? I feel like the ranking of these books just changes with every video I make about these books. I don't know how to rank things, okay? These books are just oh, fantastic. So we've got Serious Concerns by Wendy Cope. I know, me reading poetry. This is the poetry collection for people who are fed up with modern life, but simultaneously marvel at every mundane moment of humanity. Wendy Cope writes with a lot of humor in her poetry, so if you want to see her make fun of British people, football fans, men, the inevitable dread and grief and sadness that comes with life, 
you should read this. <laughs> the Last Tale of the Flower Red by Roshni Chakshi. I know people often say that you can get lost in a book, but I feel like this book you can actually get lost in. Not only because the writing style is so lush and descriptive that it can often make you feel a little bit lost, but mostly because this gothic tale is so full of rich environments and folklore references and myths that it really feels like you are roaming through the rooms of this gothic gothic mansion. Slew Foot by Brahm. If you think of the witch trials and all of those women that were wrongfully accused of witchcraft because they just were kind of fed up with all the oppressive rules that were put on them because they're women and you think what if one of these accused witches made a pact with the devil and actually gained these witchy powers and then used them to rage revenge on all of her neighbors? Well, interestingly, I have the book for you. What a coincidence. Read this if you thought the voice of Black Philip in The Witch was kind of hot. Don't read this if you are from a 17th century Puritan village in Connecticut. By the way, if you want more in-depth information about all of like the top books that I read this year, I've made a full video about that because right now I'm just going through them pretty shallowly. But the best book that I read this year is Stories of Your Life and Other Short Stories by Ted Chiang. What's better than a great story? Eight great short stories. Ted Chiang is so good at creating an entire world full of magic systems in only 40 pages and then just distilling that down to the most interesting ideas and themes and then saying okay there's also angels and the Tower of Babylon and robots made of clay. Read this if you like short stories that explore ideas and also read this if you don't like short stories. Long story short, just read this short story collection. Good. Whoa, uh, those were all of the books that I read this year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The tea has gone cold as it always has because I always forget that I have it. Subscribe for more videos about books and then I want to give a very very big thank you to all of my patrons with a special shout out to all of my elite hidden library members that you can see here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your lovely lovely day and I will see you soon in another video. Not next week because I'm going to Edinburgh but after that. Okay, bye!